Hey guys, welcome to Slasher X Games. In the last part of the turret AI tutorial, I went over the line of sight as well as barriers. In this part, I'll be going over the last known position as well as the highest hit chance. So, I've jumped right back into the uh, end product of the last known position. Again, here we have the player. As soon as he goes into the ring of death, the turret rotates and will continue to rotate until it is facing the last known position of the player. This is just so that if the player enters again, it'll have to move the least amount of distance to get again, you know, to get to the, the next location and get a shot in there. So it's a little bit more intelligent. Going to the uh, fourth concept, highest hit chance. If we're in the ring, it'll rotate but it won't shoot. Notice this line is black. As soon as that line goes red, it means the angle is acceptable for maximum casualties. Check that out. So as soon as it's red, then it's allowed to fire. Notice that's the angle over here, it's 30 degrees, 30 degrees, not good enough. I've set the angle to um, the sprite width, right there. So there's a good chance that'll hit as, as long as this angle is uh, is good. Check that out. Uh, okay, so as long as that's red, it'll shoot, and there's a good chance that'll hit its target. So I'm going to jump into the coding for these two last concepts. Alright, so Mob Cannon 3 and Mob Cannon 4 represent the two last features of the Toad AI. Mob Cannon 3 is the uh, last known position, Mob Cannon 4 is the best hit chance. So going into Mob Cannon 3, the only differences in the create event are these two variables. One variable is called X point of interest and Y point of interest. And basically, in the last part, the turret would always rotate to the player's X and Y as long as it's active. But in this case, we wanted to rotate to a position that represents the player's last known position. So that's what we've got here. At start, we're setting the point of interest to x plus 1, so it'll be facing right. And the y, that's fine, as its own y. So let's go to the step now. Again, distance to player is updated using the distance to object function, object player, as an argument. Here we're testing that um, the player is within the line of sight, less than equal, and there is no collision. Now before we had this point direction, this is the rotation code, before we had this rotation code, slap bang right in the middle of this uh, if statement, right? But now what we're doing is we're saying if the player is within the line of sight and there's no collision, then update this variable x point of interest and this variable y point of interest with the player's current location. So this means that as soon as the player leaves the line of sight, x point of interest will have the last known x value and y point of interest will have the last known y value of the player. And while this is all happening, active equals true. Then over here we're saying, well, all the time I want you to rotate your x and y to the point of interest x and the point of interest y. See, this used to be object player x and that used to be object player y. But now we're only rotating to the last known position of the player. And then this manages the slow rotation. So here we go. It's now going to rotate to these points and not the player. So it won't just stop as soon as the player leaves the uh, line of sight. So that's pretty cool. It's a very nice piece of code there. That'll make the turrets uh, more realistic. And then we've got now the final concept. Oh, wait, first let's go to the draw. Um, the draw looks the same. Basically here it draws the color, distance of the player, goes red when the player is within the line of sight, draws the line, which is black, when uh, it's active, you know, can be seen. Um, then the distance of the player value there is also black when it's false, not active, and that's the ring. Now that we've covered that, let's now go over to the highest hit chance, that's object mob cannon 4. Alright, so over here what we're going to do is now we're going to work out the angle between the player and the object, and if the angle is good, in this case I'll be setting it to the sprite width of the player. So if that if that's a good angle, then it will be able to shoot. Then we're telling it it is okay to shoot. So first, these two things, that's just to put the touch in the middle of the room. Line of sight again, R speed equals 2. I'm slowing this one down so that we can see it nicely. Distance of player, giving that something ridiculous so that it doesn't see us in the ring when we're not. Again, starting active. Can, oh, starting yeah, inactive. Can shoot equals false. See, this is a new variable called can shoot. When the angle is good, then can shoot will, be go, will go to true, and then the turret can shoot whatever it wants. Also, it's incorporating the last known position of the concept of, yeah, last known position concept, going in there. Um, here's the angle. That'll w that's where angle uh, will be stored, and it will use this to determine if it can shoot or not. Going into the step, now over here, distance to player, again, there's that. 
Here we are getting the player width and height, sprite get width, object player, sprite index, sprite get height, object player, sprite index. The good thing about doing this means that if that sprite index changes, so the player morphs into this giant beast, it means the angle will be greater so the turret could shoot sooner than before. There's that. Then what I'm doing is I'm getting an average player size. I'm going to assume um, that, yeah, the width and height is going to be crazy different different sizes. So the best case is to get an average size and here we get it. We just add in the width and the oh this should be height. Width and height. Uh, we get in the width and the height and we divide them up by two and that'll give us a, a fair chance of hitting the target. Then over here checking that the player is within the line of sight and there's no collision. I mean, that's normal. Um, which is causing us to update the X and Y of point of interest. Setting active equals true. Then over here, angle equals point direction x, y, so the x and y of the turret pointing towards the player, minus image angle, we're getting that point direction, uh, that angle. Then we're saying, well, if angle is greater than or equal to 360, we're going to mod it down to 360, because we don't want to, you know, it can't go up to 361, which is the same as 1, because 360 is 0, so we want to make sure that when it gets to 360, uh, 361, it just minuses 360, and then it's 1. Just to keep that uh, under wraps. Then here we're saying, if active equals true, right? So the turret is rotating because the player is within a line of sight. If the angle calculated here is less than the player average size divided by 4, okay, or angle is greater than 360 degrees minus player average size divided by 4. All right. Working out the angle on both sides of that line. So if it falls, if the player is a bit to the left of the line or a bit to the right of the line, uh, within that angle that we're working out, then it'll be able to shoot. That little line will go red and it'll light up that area. Otherwise, if the angle is way greater than all that there, then we're going to set can shoot to false. Check that out. And then here again, we're always rotating towards the player's last known position if it exists. If it if the player hasn't gone into the line of sight at all, then that'll just be that, right? Okay. And then in the draw over here, there we go. Act equals true. Um, draw distance play in red. If it can shoot, then it's going to draw the line in red to the player. And also below that it's going to draw the angle in red. And if otherwise it's just going to be both in black. Alright, and then also if active equals false, draw the distance to the player in black. And then this at the end here is the line of sight ring. So now let's go back to that room and check this out as we can explain the code as it's running. Okay, so this one right here. Highest hit chance. Okay. So, all the time it's taken, to, taken into account my width and height. You can see as I rotate, I'm not exactly circle. See that? I'm a bit offset. So it's going to get the average of those two. Then it's going to put those average. It's going to put those average on uh, each side of that angle. And if we fall within what it deems is acceptable to shoot at, it will uh, light it up. It'll go red and say, "Well, I can shoot now." So going in. Notice the line is black, the turret is rotating slowly, which, you know, we can control the situation a little better while I explain. Notice this angle is much greater than we want it to be. We're working out the angle between 300 and, well, between 360 and what that is there. If that difference is the value of angles less than or equal to the value of angle that it's acceptable to shoot at, then it'll go red. So if we stand here, wait for it, boom. See that? While it's red, it means that it can fire. Can shoot is now equal to true, and it can do as it pleases. Notice that now. And as soon as we leave that, see there? As soon as we leave that, make that angle bigger, it is not going to shoot. And if we go on the other side, notice it goes, instead of going to 363, um, you know, etc., it going up, it's going to instead go to 3 degrees. As soon as it goes over 360, it's going to start again at 1. See that? Um, it's easier to manage. Notice that when it's over here, it's working out this whole angle. When it's on the right hand, when I'm on the right hand side of the turret over here, 
then it's just this angle over there between where it's pointing and the line. So that's why this will be 40, whatever. You can figure that out if you want to make it pleasing, but you shouldn't see that anyway, so it wouldn't matter. So once this goes red, it can fire, and the chances of hitting the target are pretty good. And that takes into account the width and height of the sprite in question. So if I had to put a bigger sprite there, uh, this angle will be greater because the chances of hitting me would uh, be, it'll be easier now. So that wraps up all four concepts of turrets artificial intelligence. First part we covered line of sight and the barriers. Second part we covered last known position as well as the highest hit chance. And the last room again incorporates all these features. There we go again behind the barrier. And this is really good for your top down shooters as well as tower defense games. Just like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Um, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe, and tell your friends. There's some really good tutorials going out there. I'd like to grow this channel and uh, reach as many game developers as possible. And I will see you guys next time. So thanks for watching.